I appreciate every, everybody coming out. Uh, just it's it, it's really amazing how fast the spring and summer and the falls go, uh, and we're already back at it. We're 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 less than a week away uh, from our first ball game. It's great, 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 great to see so many f- uh, familiar faces again, and uh, looking forward to uh, what I think has a chance to be a really good basketball year. Um, you know, it's going to take some time. We've we've got a lot of new faces. Uh, we're young. In many ways, we do have some experienced players back that have been a, a big part of our success success here. But we are going to be counting on some freshmen, some sophomores, uh, to be big parts of our team. So it, it's going to take us some ball games uh, to really get a feel for who's going to be able to do what when the lights come on. Uh, there's always been players that are great pra- uh, practice players, and then also when the lights turn turn on, uh, they're they're okay. And then you've got players that they're in practice, and you're like, golly, if they could just make some shots. And then all of a sudden, when the lights turn on, the ball goes in. Um, And I am a believer in that, that there are kids that can can, can perform under pressure, and there's some that that struggle. So we're we're at a part right now of we're going to have to find that out. We're going to have to find out when we need a basket, who are we going to? Who's going to be able to get their own shot? Uh, you know, I've, I've always said over the past few years, good, uh, good teams can play in chaos. Uh, you know, anybody, if you're able to run a set, run your offense, get yourself a good shot, can score. But it's when things break down, who's going to be the best at being able to put the ball in the basket and create shots? And for the past few years, we, we, we've been very fortunate with Asia Durr. Uh, who made it look pretty easy. Uh, and a lot of the shots that she made were not easy uh, when things broke down. But now it's going to be who is that person going to be. Uh, and we've seen some, some glimpses through our, two, our first two scrimmages, uh, but still looking forward to, to, to see how it's going to unfold as we go through this non-conference season. With so many new faces, as you mentioned, but also so many players who can play multiple positions, does that versatility serve as kind of like a, a two sides of the same coin in a way? Yeah, it, it's really going to be interesting for us to find out what our best lineups are going to be. Um, you know, it's not as, as we did this past year. Dana had earned a starting spot. She had played extremely well in non-conference, in, in our practices leading up to the start of last year. But what was best for our team was for her to come off the bench because she brought quickness. She brought a change of tempo. Um, So it's really going to take probably some players that have the same kind of mindset that she had that, you know what, it's not going to affect my minutes being played, but I might not be able to do the handshake. You know, and if I can get players to buy into that, then I think we, 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 we have a chance to, to be special because we do have 9, 10, 11 that can play and play multiple spots. Um, and as you, as you go as a coach and as a team, you've, you, you've got to find some, some special players who, who, who are willing to give of themselves for, for the better of the team. Have Liz and Elizabeth had that mindset so far? Yeah, they've, they've both been great. Uh, everybody's been good. You know, I, I started did different lineups in both exhibition games, our scrimmages that we had. Uh, so it's not like we've just gone with one lineup for the first two. Um, you know, and, and I haven't seen anyone that's been upset or worried. But we'll have those talks tomorrow once we get into finally sitting down and saying, okay, here's going to be the first five. Here are my first three or four subs that are, are, are coming off the bench and try to get a little bit of a, ro- a, a of a rotation down. When you do have to replace so many valuable members of your of your roster, how does that change things for your, you and your staff as you do get prepared for another big year? Well, you're 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 never going to replace them. You know, like everybody asks me, how are we going to replace Angel Bacatra? You're not. You know, then it was Shoney. Then it was Maisha, then Asia. Like you somebody else just has to step up now. Now it's who's going to be that player that has worked on their game in the offseason that's going to surprise everyone in here. And we've got a few 
candidates for that. That I'm I'm pretty excited to see how are they they going to play when when the lights come on because they've really worked on their game. Um, you know, as coaches, the difficult part of and it's not a, a difficult part. It's just the way it goes is you don't have the knowledge of hey these six have played together for three years. They know what we're doing. They know what each other are doing. That's our biggest challenge right now is they're trying to learn each other on the court. At practice, it's great. You know, you, 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 you can do things at practice, but when the game starts and people start switching things on defense, they start trapping, how are they going to react? That, that's why I say it's going to take us, you know, a month, uh, a, a month and a half of playing before I really get a great feel of what, what our combinations are going to be. Jeff, you mentioned replacing Angel, replacing Shoney. When you look now, though, where your program's at, this is a much deeper team, better, maybe even better team than what you had after those. Did you learn anything from those years after that that you will change this year? Maybe no, different? we aren't going to change much. No, I mean, we do what we do, um, and we're going to continue to do it. Now, we'll, we'll make a few adjustments offensively because we don't have Asia. You know, I, I've, I've said it, and I've, I've told some, some of my friends that, and, and, and colleagues, 2 through 11, 12, we're as good as we've ever been. I'm just not sure who the one's going to be yet. You know, this is as deep as we've been, 2 through 11, 2 through 12. But I'm waiting to see who's going to be the one. You know, Asia, we knew. Shoney, but before that. And then Angel before that. So we always had that one alpha. So now I'm waiting to find out who's going to be that person that, that, that's going to step up and take over that, uh, 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 that role. And that, 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 that's what's fun about it. It's what's fun for them, too. Uh, despite the learning curve on your side, the consensus around the league is top of the ACC, definitely top in the country. Uh, how do you think those expectations are impacting your team's focus? Well, I, I don't think they're impacting us at all. I mean, we really don't look at that. We put enough internal pressure on what we do. Uh, you know, we have expectations here. We have a culture that we've established over the past 12, uh, 12 years, there are expectations. And we know what's in front of us. You know, for, for a few of us, for for Liz and Elizabeth, it it is a change. You know, it's a little bit of a change of, hey, now, you know, they, they had great years at Georgia Tech. Michelle did a great job with them. But now all of a sudden, we're the game. You know, now you're playing on a team where you're the game. It's not, okay, well, we played this team, and then we've got Notre Dame or Louisville after that. No, you are Louisville now. So you're going to get everybody's best shot. And that's a little bit of an adjustment uh, for them. But we've talked about it. I think they're, they're, they're prepared for it. And they're really looking forward to this first game on Tuesday night to, to, to play in front of our crowd. Uh, do you expect to experiment with the starting lineup and the rotation just a couple of weeks and maybe even a month into the season then? Yeah, it wouldn't su 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 surprise me. Uh, you know, to try, 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 try to get a feel for what's best for our team. And I've, I've said it all along. The best five might not start. It's what's best for our team. I've said it for 12, 12 years, thir 13 years, going on 13 years now. Players need to be less concerned about who starts and more concerned about who finishes. Because when it's a two-point game and you're in there with four minutes left, that's the good sign. That's the one where it's like, hey, coach has got the confidence in me. Coach knows that when it's crunch time and it's on the line, he can trust me. And that's what I – that's the message I keep telling our players. Uh, but, you know, all this handshake stuff and all this coming out, starting lineups, it's kind of it, – it, it, it's, got, it's gotten a little crazy. That, that's one thing I love about FIBA, uh, FIBA basketball is they just announce everybody. Every, every player gets announced, you know, and I think that's fantastic. Then it eliminates it. Or it's like 12 handshakes, which takes too long. Coach, what have you seen from some of the newcomers, and are there any players out there that you're keeping an eye out on that really could be make an impact or maybe be one of those people that you said could have a big season? Well, everybody's been working ex extremely hard. Uh, I've been really impressed. I, I, Jazz – put a lot of time into her game in the offseason. Dana put a lot of time into her game. 
Uh, you know, those two especially, I've, I've, I've been able to see it on the court. You know, other players have worked hard too. Kylie's worked hard in the offseason. Uh, you know, but the biggest challenge and the frustration for a lot of them is all because we both work hard doesn't mean we're both going to get the same results. And that's the most difficult thing for athletes to un- understand. And I, 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 I compare it to schoolwork. I'm like, guys, all because you both study two hours for an exam doesn't mean you're both going to get the same, same grade. You know, for some, it's, it's easier. So you might have to spend four hours to study and get the same grade that, so, that someone got after two hours. And that's the same thing with basketball. You know, I spend a, an hour shooting. It might not be enough. So that's where the frustration can come sometimes from players. NCA recently has come down with a decision about compensation for student athletes. Some of your thoughts on that? No, you know, um, that's for the higher ups. You know, uh, it's it's I I understand where it's going. I think it can be, you know, something that's very bene- uh, beneficial to the student athlete. Um, you know, the, the the one thing that I struggle with at times is is everybody going to be a, be able to get it. In the terms of, you know, if I'm the screener or if I'm the rebounder, is there somebody in town who's going to want to use my likeness and my image because I set good screens? Now, a window company could use you, you know. You know, that's my concern for, especially for women's programs, is like, hey, is this someone like an Asia Durr, is that where all the money is going to go? And then all of a sudden you get a rift in your locker room because it's like, well, I'm, I'm screening for her, I'm rebounding for her, but I'm not getting anything. You know, where professionally, now, you might be LeBron getting the biggest contract, but everybody is getting something. And that, I think, is where it could become a little bit sticky for not just women's basketball, but for, for all, all sports. Because, you know, I, I don't know if everybody is going to be able to benefit. They might be allowed to. You know, we're all allowed to declare for the draft. Unfortunately, I, my name's never been called. So that's, that's a little bit of my concern to figure out how is that all going to work out. So it, it should be interesting. Jeff, how has Dana taken the next step of, uh, you know, after last year and – she did have a totally different role than I assume she will have this year. Yeah, I mean, there, there's no question. She'll be a starter. Uh, she's earned that right. She's really been doing a, a much better job of getting off the basketball, which is one of the things that we talked about all last year. You know, in high school, she always penetrated. She had to have the ball in her hands a lot. Uh, in our scrimmage the other day, she hit two huge threes towards the end of the game, and they both came off the ball reversal when the ball came back to her. And that's the area that I'm trying to get her to see is, like, you can control a game for us, get the ball up the floor as quick as you can off the pass or the dribble and then get away from it and then get it on reversal. Because right now she is – I'd put her up there as our best three-point shooter percentage-wise. When it leaves her hand, I feel really good about it. I feel like it's going in because she's put the the time into it. But that that takes some adjusting of – Hey, let's get the ball to somebody, get away from it, and then get it back. Jeff, for the fans out there who have not seen either – hi, Jeff have, – have not seen uh, Elizabeths yet in action, what can they expect from both of them? And do you call any of them a little bit different? Because if you yell Elizabeth at practice, do they both turn around? Well, it's, uh, I've got E for Elizabeth Balagoon and Liz for El- Elizabeth Dixon. Uh, you know, Elizabeth Dixon – has been rebounding the ball extremely well. Um, she is probably it's been it's been a while since we've per se had a back to the basket post player, but she can also face up from from the free throw line. Uh, so I think it's going to give us a little bit more of a true post presence, uh, both both offensively and defensively. Uh, and then Elizabeth Balagoon, you know, she was ACC Freshman of the Year for a a reason. She has the ability to score. Uh, shoots the three. The one thing I do want to see is how consistent she, she can be for us from there. Uh, and then de- defensively, 
is where she has to improve for us. She's got to just become a, a little bit more of a solid defender instead of a risk taker in going for steals. Jeff, and you were talking about um, you know Kylie working hard in the offseason. What what part of her game do you really want to see more from? Is is it you want to see her score more? You want to see her you know hit the boards a lot harder this year? Uh, both of those, scoring and rebounding. What I want to see from Kylie is to score in the low post more consistently, especially when she has the advantage. And then when we're playing somebody who's got some bigs that 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 might be bigger than she is, uh, you know, to be able to step out and knock down the three because she can spread the floor for us. Um, but rebounding-wise is, is something that she has gotten better at uh, in both of our, our scrimmages. I thought she, she rebounded the ball well. But, you know, she can easily be getting us seven to eight rebounds a game uh, if, if she'll pursue the ball. And then if what we've talked about, if she'll pursue the ball, her scoring will go up also because she'll get more offensive rebounds as well. What is it like having two players who come in who are used to playing with each other but in a different system at a different program? It, it's nice for the fact that they know each other. I mean, there's no question about that. But our style of play, what we're trying to do is different than what they're, they're accustomed to. You know, we're trying to get up and down the floor – as quick as we can, so they're they're adjusting to, to that. But I think they both enjoy that style, um, and and I, I think they help each other out because, it, it, as I've told them, they came from a a situation where they were, you know, their leading scores. Both of them were one two, to where now they might not be our leading scores. You know, there there's a, a pretty good group of ball players that they're going to be playing with. And that takes some adjusting too. When you go from hey, I'm um, option A one and you know and A two, to where they might be option three and four. But that's what they wanted, and that's what they're excited about. That they're also going to be playing with some very talented players. Coming off of back to back thirty plus win seasons, and then losing your most winningest senior class in program history. What's your expectations of the team this year? But I mean, high. I mean that's exact. I mean we we have the same expectations as we've had. I mean our our goals are to to play our best basketball in March, like we've figured out a way to do. Now we've got a longer way to go to get there than we have the past few years. Um, but you know, once if you can get yourself into a Sweet Sixteen in into the second weekend of playing, anything can happen. And uh, you know that's our goal is to get us to that second w w weekend. And then it takes a little bit of luck, you know, a, a, a call here or there, and you advance to the, the next game. And then you've got to step up. I mean, it's, you're playing great, uh, uh, great teams. And, you know, our, our goal from there is to get back to a, a, a Final Four. Coach, you talk a lot about the uh, fan support that you get and the people who come out and watch the game. Even though you don't have a – Asia Durr on the team, somebody who can get 20 points a game and somebody who's exciting to watch and whatnot, a compelling player. What what can you say about what the crowd will see this year? Well, you know, the the neat thing about it is we we might not have Asia Durr out there, but we've got some pretty pretty darn good basketball players. Uh, they're they're going to see a team that, that's going to compete, that's going to play hard, going to play hard for each other. Uh you know, I think we're passing the ball pretty well. We're sharing it. And then, you know, you've got some interesting stories. Uh, Norika Kono, our freshman from J Japan, uh, has, has been doing a, a great job for us. And I think people are going to be really excited to, 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 to watch her play. Um, Jazz is stepping up into a role that, that she hasn't had to have before. But she's worked so hard on her game that now she can be one, one of the go-to players. Dana's role has changed. Uh, it's just, and then you've got y Yassine Diop, who was out last year with the torn ACL. Now she's back. So it's just, we have a lot of, of pieces. We might not have Asia, but we've got about eight, eight or nine that have the ability to get 15 to 20 on any night. I'm just not sure we have one that can get us 47. <laughs> you've lost That's seven. Fair, isn't it? You've lost seven games the last two years, and 
that isn't in most normal single seasons you might lose seven. Do you worry at all? I mean, you may only lose three or four this year. Who knows? Or you might lose more. But do you worry that the expectation, whether from players or fans or whoever, grows to be, oh, they're only going to lose two or three games this year if they're not in the top five, something's wrong? You know, it's it, it, it's a good thing. to ha- It's a good problem to have. Because when it's the opposite way, you're concerned about getting fired. So, it, you know, it, it's – expectations at time can go through the roof, and it's like, wow, okay, guys, you know – it, we get we've gone to five elite eight games in twelve se- in twelve years, three final fours, and I remember when I got hired here thirteen years ago. Tom's goal was to get to a Sweet Sixteen, you know, a program had never been to a Sweet Sixteen. Now, if we get to a Sweet Sixteen and get beat, I think it, people would consider it a failure. So expectations have greatly changed, but in a good way, because that's what you want as a coach. You want teams that. There are expectations for you. Uh, look at Chris. Look at our, our, our men's program. I mean, nobody knew what to expect last year. And now they're, ta- they're talking about a team that, that can go to the Final Four. So, you know, when you get some, some players in, expectations change. You talked about the players you lost from last year, your seniors, a lot of leadership there. Who have you kind of seen step forward into into that sort of role, or, or maybe that's something you're still kind of waiting to see? We're still working on that right now, but Jazz and, and Dana and Bianca have have done a pretty good job job of that. Uh, but but again, we haven't played a game yet, and that's when you really are going to find out who your leaders are going to be. Everybody's in a good mood. Everybody's had the opportunity to play some during our two scrimmages. Some may have not have played as much as they wanted, but everybody had the opportunity to play. Well, as you progress through the year and all of a sudden your games get more challenging and your rotation might shrink some, then you're going to start finding out who your leaders are going to be and what kind of locker room we're going to have chemistry-wise. Coach, on a much more serious Van Halloween's tomorrow night, what has Lucy and Lola decided you were going to be? We, we can't divulge that. The, that day before, I mean, are you kidding? There's a lot of people. We are know. we are dressing up. Uh, you know, the weather. I mean, if if we could have that cooperate for us, would would, would be a huge help. Uh, but no, we are very excited about it. We're going to be out. We'll have so, so, some pictures up. Uh, my my girls love to get dressed up, and uh, we go out. And knock on doors, and you know they they have a blast. So it's going to be a good time. You'll have to wait to see. No, no. He can't do me. Jeff, you you talked about Narika. What what has she done in her transition here, and how crazy do you feel like it was for her? How how easy did you have to take it early on because of the maybe even the language barrier a little bit? The the the, the basketball has been fine. She basketball is basketball. You know, put the ball in the basket. Uh, it's not very difficult. She's done a great job uh, adjusting to what we're doing on the basketball court. Uh, so uh, uh, socially, I think she's she's really handled it well. Um, academically, you know, it, it it's, it's been a challenge just with the language part of it. Um, you know, I saw her today when she was meeting with um, our, our academic advisor. I said, how's school going? She said, difficult. But what's great is she wants A's and B's. You know, and I'm looking at, you know, some of her work, and I'm like, for me, this is outstanding if it was me. Uh, but, that, but that's not what she's going for. You know, and that's what I really admire about her. And... You know, the things I think she's brought to our team, uh, she's one of the most caring and giving people that I've been around. Uh, she war- she lightens up, she, she just lights up a room. You, you look at her, you smile. She's smiling all the time. I had to get on her the other day because every day I'd see her, I'd be like, Narika, how are you doing? And she'd be like, good. And I'm like, okay, it can't always be good, hon. And then finally, we had a good sit-down talk, and, and she was struggling some one day. And I'm like, well, you can tell me. She goes, no, I don't tell the coach. You know, and that's just kind of her mindset. Like, I, she doesn't want to show weakness to anything, and I'm trying to get her to understand that, no, it's okay. You know, that's what we're here for. We're here to help you. And I think for the most part, her teammates have done a really nice job. 
but um, her English is getting better and better every single day. Uh, her work ethic is, is off the charts, both both on the basketball court and academically. So it's going to get easier for her. Um, but it, it's been a, a little bit of a, a challenge. There, there, there's no question. But I told her, I said, you know, if if I could have four of you on my team, I'd take four of you because she is just that type of person that you come to practice, you're excited to be here. I had Dana Evans come up to my office after about three weeks of school, and I asked her, how's Norika doing? Can you tell me? She's like, Coach, she makes me want to be a better person. You know, and when you can have a junior in college say that about a teammate, not she wants to be a better basketball player. She wants me, she wants me to be – I, I want to be a better person. I think that just speaks volumes for who she is and the impact she's had on our team. Jeff, you've got a lot of new faces on the team. What does somebody like a senior and Jessica, what does she mean to this team, and, and how can she help with so many new faces? Oh, she's been great. Uh, you know, she's a team player. She comes to practice every single day. She she works hard for us. She's got a great personality. Uh, you know, I treat her the exact same way as I treated Asia Dirt. I give her as much grief as I give all of them. Um, and, I, you know, it, she's great to have around. I think she loves every second of it. And you, you never know. It's like I've told her, just always be ready. You know, she's played in some games. She played up at Notre Dame before half, before half this, this past year. You know, because the one thing I do know is she'll take care, take care of the ball for me. Uh, she very seldomly, seldomly will turn it over. And defensively, she knows where she's supposed to be and everybody else on the floor, which is a big help. Coach, just real quickly, I know with a lot of new faces and – your practices are always spirited anyway, but does it create any particular issues trying to work combinations so early in the season till you've been able to play a game? Well, I think that's where the challenge is going to come in is when, once we start figuring out what our rotation is going to be. Because, like, right now, you know, there are some players that probably aren't getting as many reps because I'm trying to give so many people opportunities to figure out where they're going to fit in to the ro uh, ro rotation. You know, starting tomorrow – I'm, I'm going to have to start cutting some things down and put some players on what we call the scout team. And that's not a bad thing because, like I tell them, I'd rather be on the scout team getting to show the coaches what I can do every possession instead of one out of every three or four. Um, and then for some of them, it's going to help them talent-wise, skill-wise too because they're on the floor so, so much more. Uh, you know, Jess is one that played on scout team all last year for us. But play, but played in some games, so you know I think that's going to come down to it. And then uh, as the year goes, we'll just adjust to things and hopefully try to, you know, the one the one thing I do do is I, I tell players what they have to do to play, instead of why you're not playing. And then I, I also can have some some difficult con conversation. I'll say, well, who do you think you should play in front of? And then for the most part of the past twelve years, I, I've got players that can sit there in my office and go. Yeah, it's a good question. You know, because once they self-evaluate, they know, okay, this is what I've got to do. Um, you know, I tell them all the time, I, I think what makes our program what it is is we don't have perfect kids. And if anybody does, they're crazy if they say they do. But what we have, I truly believe, are young women that do know the, the, the difference between right and wrong. And at 18 to 22, are you always going to do the right thing? No, I didn't. But, you know, when you sit down and you reflect on what took place, can you go, you know what, that was pretty stupid. You know, and you move forward. But that's the same way when it comes to evaluating where you are within a team. You know, I'll, I'll never forget our, our first year I had the players rank each other. Now, this is with Angel, okay, and, and Candace Bingham. I had them rank each other from 1 to, one to uh, 15. And I had a freshman at the time, and I won't say a name, that, that, that put herself first. This is at Christmas time. So we we'd played half the year. She put herself first. And I met with all of them. I said, hey, you have yourself first. The average for the rest of the 14 players on the team have you at 13. And she honestly looked at me and said, if you gave me as many minutes as you give Angel, I could do the same thing. Well, that's when you've got a problem because that's when you don't know the difference between right and wrong. <laughs> and I don't – we don't have that. 
And when you're honest with players and then they know, okay, this is what I have to do to play instead of leaving an office feeling rejected of you can't do this, you can't do that, or this. Instead, it's like, hey, if you do this, this, and this, you're going to get the opportunity to play. Yeah, sure is. Thank you, guys. I appreciate it. Are the players out there?